What up, guys? It's Chris. Today, I wanted to um, talk about my punt page on MA2, kind of how I have it set up and programmed and how I clone into things um, going forward. So uh, you can see the MA3D at the bottom of the screen there. And I just kind of have, you know, a couple straight sticks of truss and a downstage, midstage, upstage, um, you know, kind of the assortment of fixtures you would expect to find at places. I think there's eight or ten. I think there's ten spots per, um, ten spots on the on the trusses, ten washes, and ten beams. There's also a couple of a couple of LED fixtures up there, some side washes, some uh, some profiles and and wa <coughs> excuse me and beams and stuff on the floor. Um, again, all kind of fixtures where you would normally expect them to be in, in a, a regular show. So it's kind of going to be hard because I'm on, on PC and I don't have a console, but everything that we're going to look at right now is how I would look at it on a console in the show. Uh, so this layout view down here we'll come back to in a little bit, but if I go ahead and bring up screen two, um, this is going to be on my, my colors. Um, you've probably seen some fancier color pickers with, you know, layout views and all the copy image macros and all that stuff. Um, this is fine for me. You can see the first row. If we just tap through some of the colors are kind of the uh, all all selections. Uh, and then we can go down and, and I can grab my spots, turn them red, grab my wash lights, uh, turn them kind of magenta maybe, and uh, grab my beams, go ahead and make them yellow. My LEDs, go ahead and make those magenta as well, just so you can see them. And my uh, front light, which I call fronts, uh, we'll put that in open white for now, just so kind of everybody can see how this page works. And uh, there's a couple of buttons here. Again, we'll come back to that when we talk about my color effects. Um, but for now, I'll put everything back at blue. So this is the uh, fader page here. That's kind of would be in front of me. Um, sometimes. I like to keep. I like to try to keep everything to um, 15 faders if I can. Sometimes I get a light. Sometimes I get a full. Uh, it's kind of different everywhere. But this is about how my uh, 15 faders look at the moment. Um, I have my spot intensity. I have my wash uh, intensity beams, my LED intensity, and my front light intensity. So we'll just go ahead and bring those back down for a moment. I also have a temp fader here that'll kind of bring in my color effects, um, my color effect if, if and when I need it. Um, a couple speed faders here that'll this will control the uh, this will control the speed of the color effects. This will control the speed of the movement, the dimmer chases, and some of the zoom stuff I have. Um, I've labeled all of my spot stuff in this green, all of my wash stuff in this blue, all of my beam stuff in this pink, LEDs and purple, and fronts in yellow. Now, what's all the stuff uh, that you might ask? Well, if we go ahead and look at our screen three, uh, which would be directly above this fader bank here, um, oops, we can go ahead and see that, that there's a lot of the same colors. So I have a couple of effects. Um, this is mostly an effect. Well, this is mostly an effects page. Um, we have our dimmers, and you can see that I've labeled it SP um, just to remind myself that it's the spots. But you know, again, we could use the color scheme to note that as well. So if I were to hit that, you can see that they're um, going about there. And if I move my dimmer uh, speed master up, they'll go a little faster. If I move it down, it'll go a little slower. Have the same thing for the uh, washes as well, dimmer. Uh, sorry, the uh, beams and the uh, LEDs, and everything's doing like a little dimmer sign right now. And again, this dimmer speed master will control uh, all of those effects. The dimmer effects underneath are kind of the same, the same idea. These are just symmetrical. That's why it says sim. Um, so we'll go ahead and get this going kind of crazy. Everything's going there. And these are just toggles. Uh, so if you're familiar with MA2, a toggle is just kind of an on-off type of switch. And, uh, yeah, so if we reset all of our dimmer... Oh, uh, this Q stack down below will change the um, form of all of these dimmer chases. That's why it says dim form right here. 
So if we were to hit go, uh, you can see that we're in the sine wave and nothing has changed. If I were to hit go one more time, I uh, think they're doing a little ramp up, ramp, uh, a little ramp up. Uh, if I hit it one more time, you can see that it's doing the opposite. It's doing a ramp down. And if I were to hit it one more time, you can see that it's doing like a kind of a hard dimmer chase or, or a PWM, as MA2 likes to call it. Keep in mind at the top of this window here, you're going to want direct action on when you're running the show so that you can do what I'm doing and just go ahead and toggle everything here and, uh, uh, you know, just step through your cue stacks by, you know, just, uh, just touching them on the touchscreen. This macro in the corner will uh, reset everything. So we, we kind of got some wild stuff going on right now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, reset our dimmer effects. That's going to put this... I believe, well, I should have put it back to sign. Definitely didn't. Um, but the idea is that'll kind of turn everything back off and kind of get you in, in more of a static place. Um, if we were to just kind of toggle some things on again, you can see that this macro at the bottom off effects will do the same thing. Kind of just dump everything that we have. So to kind of round up this first uh, column here, I have a few positions. Uh, we'll just go ahead and kind of bring everything down really quick. We'll, we'll step through them as needed. Uh, I'm going to start with the front light. Uh, there's kind of only one cue, uh, sorry, one position for that, and this is, is a stage wash per se. So that's why I just have the one uh, position there. Um, the LEDs, there would be positions if they were, say, you know, 360 bars or something like that. I just have them right now patched um, as pixels, so the Position um, is a little uh, mute here. Uh, the same will go for my the wash fixtures. Uh, at the moment, they're just in one kind of static stage wash look, and that's how I've kind of kept everything. Um, but moving on to something more complex, let's look at our spots here. So you can see these are kind of in like an XX position. So I'm going to go ahead and, and tap this, and it'll bring up all of the um, cues that I have programmed here. And, and again, just like toggle, you know, this is this go to is just kind of a not go to queue is just kind of an option here. Um, so I can go, you know, fan out air and it'll bring me up there. Um, if we jump back to screen two, you can see I can bring up my executor time. Uh, if we brought up our executor time, take something like 10 seconds, go back. I will uh, go to queue, go to, let's say, straight out stage. And this should fade in 10 seconds. Yep. So again, it's a little funky on on PC, but if you had the console right in front of you, everything would kind of be at your fingertips there. So let's go back to that window and just kind of slam that back down so that we can toggle a few things. Um, but yeah, so I have a couple different positions here, you know, fan out. Some of them are probably kind of lame. Some of them probably kind of aren't fan in in the air, you know, things uh, of that nature. The same thing would uh, apply to our beams. We can uh, just tap it here, fan in on the stage, straight out into the audience. A um, couple different options. And uh, just to go ahead and round off the left side of the screen, I want to talk about these four buttons here. Um, they are kind of just red and blue to signify an uh, odd even or an AB type thing. So if we go ahead and we'll go back to our executor window, if we go ahead and bring our washes down, you can see we only have our spots up. Um, if I flash between the two of these, they kind of just do a little odd even type thing. Same thing with our washes, um, just a little odd even type thing. Could be fun when you're punting, could not be. While we're here, I will start uh, this center section. I have a spot white and a wash white but, uh, temp button. So you can see when I hit it, the spots go to white. And when I release it, they go to zero. Same thing with the washes. Uh, if we go back to screen three, you can see I have this white fader up here that has, uh, I've labeled it off white time, or that's how I've noted it um, like this. So if I were to click something like say one, and again, go back to my executor and then hit that. When I release it, it now has an off time of one second. Same thing with the washes. Oh, 
And um, I've just programmed a couple of generic times in here, you know, quarter of a second, half a second, um, you know, stuff like that. That'll just kind of, you know, sometimes that's more desirable than the quick off. So going back to the middle section here, um, you can see that we have pan, tilt, circle for kind of all of our fixture types here. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all, but I will go through a couple of them. You know, we have our uh, spots moving in a circle. Again, if we bring our move fader up, you can see that they're just going a little faster. And, you know, that's the general idea for all of them here. We can also go ahead and... You know, if I bring this up way high, holy shit, that's crazy, 250. I can always reset my speed masters. That'll put everything back at 30 for me. Um, these red buttons are just some macros that I've programmed the quick syntaxes into. We can take a look at them if, if people are interested. But, you know, if you are if you understand, you know, the programming of this, you should be able to kind of understand the programming of, of these macros, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, so these will kind of all do the same thing. And uh, again, this button will, you know, off our effects. Uh, moving on to the right hand side of the screen here, this gobo uh, Q stack, we can select a few different gobo choices for the spots. We can select, you know, a few different things there. If we go back to our color picker, I'll go ahead and make not everything white. Maybe I'll make everything light blue per se. For now, I'll go ahead and bring down my washes. And I'll just glow my beams just a little bit. And right next to the gobo window, I have the uh, beam one that'll put it either in prism one or prism two. I think I patched these as Roby points. Uh, and MA3D kind of is what it is in terms of actually visualizing it, but you at least kind of get the idea. And then back to uh, open. Let me go ahead and bring our washes back up and our, our beams back down. I do have a couple of Q stacks for our focus palettes here. Nothing crazy. Um, just wide on the spots, narrow and medium. Same thing with the washes. Wide, narrow, medium. I like to kind of keep both of them on medium for a while. Um, the zoom sign, you know, it'll just kind of do a little a signage through the, through the zoom. And there is a handle for that down here as well. I could turn that way up, turn that way down if I wanted to. Um, yeah. Toggle that off. The same thing with the wash. You can kind of see it going through there. Um, an RGB effect. Uh, because this is a color effect, this will respond to CFX here, which is just the way I, I call color effects. And um, this is just when you need, you know, the RGB going on. Use it sparingly. And that's pretty much it for screen three. Um, let's go back and take a look at this color picker here. So for this, I'm just going to use our spots and LEDs, for example. Um, so everything's in cyan, as we can see. I'm going to change my AB color picker to red and blue. And then I'm going to go to screen two, and I'm going to spots activate. I'm going to turn those on. I'm also going to turn my LEDs on. And what that just did was grab those fixtures and told them to be used in my color effects effect, which we saw was red and blue. I'm going to go ahead and I guess keep that where that is just so that we can see it. And this temp fader should be able to roll in this color effect. As you can see, it'll do what a temp fader does. You can go right from this color. You can ease the color effect in, or you can just slam it in. Uh, and then the CFX here will kind of tame that down, just like any other Speedmaster would. So if we go back to our screen here, this is kind of a live color picker with the uh, image, you know, uh, magic, if you will. And I can just kind of, you know, select any color. Uh, we're going green to blue. Now we're going green to magenta. Um, the color selection will always be a hard zero count. Um, I haven't really figured a way around that too much. I also haven't really needed to figure out a way around that too much in my experience. What I'll usually do is just, I'll always kind of maybe keep everything underneath at a, at a blue. And then, you know, if I got to get something crazy, I'll go ahead and, 
and uh, you know, wheel wheel her in. So I do want to show some of the magic behind the Q stacks and stuff here. So stuff like our focus palettes, you know, focus Q stacks and stuff. This is just regular um, palettes kind of stored as cues per se. These are just effects that are, you know, a toggle. Same thing with these um, color effects. These are just effects with a toggle that reference a certain speed master. But things like the off white time for our executors down here are a little more complex. And I just wanted to show you guys. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and take di direct action off and, and right click this if you're on PC or edit it if you're on a console. And then I'll scroll over to the command section here and you can see kind of what we have going on. And all that I'm really doing in the command section is just assigning an off time to both of those executors. You can see that I'm referencing them here by their name. And, you know, this would be the, the um, syntax to change the off time for anything, really. Um, if we take a look at our, our macro for off effects here, we're just going to make a quick note of these numbers, 106, 110, one uh, excuse me, 121 to 125, things like that. And you can just see that we're offing those groups of executors. <clears throat> um, we're not offing the effects themselves per se. We're just offing the executors, which we know are toggles. Um, and we have programmed them on uh, page 10, which is why there's a 10 dot in front of the numbers. Um, and fader CFX at zero, it also offs the effect. Um, if you remember that particular effect isn't a toggle on or off, that's something that we kind of temp fade in. Um, resetting the speed masters, let's take a quick look at this. Um, again, this is just pretty pretty simple syntax, and this programming stuff like this is a great way to learn the syntax of MA2. There are a lot of benefits and and things that you can do if you know the precise syntax through macros that you know are kind of hard to achieve otherwise. Um, the same thing we can look into the uh, dimmer form um, Q stack. It just kind of assigns the form of you know all these effects assign you know. Form 10, Form 11, Form 4, and you might be saying, well, what what is Form 11 and Form 4? If we bring this up really quick, we're going to bring up and holy shit, we're going to bring up an effects pool. We just right-click it, load predefined, boom. Uh, well, we'll see Form 8 is assigned, and Form 10 is the ramp plus. So, you know, Kind of going back to uh, what we just looked at. You can see that we're changing it to signs and ramps up. <clears throat> um, the last thing I want to show you guys is kind of how I would clone into this rig per se. So uh, quickly, I just patched some auras very quickly. And I've only patched eight of them. So I'm going to show you how I would clone into that. Um, as you can see, we've kind of patched, or sorry, that we've programmed with 10 fixtures per truss. And what you could do is clone fixture, you know, 10, uh, sorry, we're doing uh, washes, so that would be my 2Os, right? So what you could do is clone, you know, fixture, we have 201 through 208, you could pick 2001 through 2008, However, your symmetrical effects and things of that nature would not work very well. So what I would recommend to do, if you had an instance like this, where if you had fewer than what you have originally programmed with, I would pick the inner eight, so that symmetrical effects would still work. For example, if we hit the copy button twice, that'll bring up clone, fixture, and remember it's always source at destination fixtures so you're cloning your source fixtures at your destination fixtures we're going to clone fixture to 002 through 2009 now that should give us the eight fixtures that we want uh, from our source at fixture 201 through 208 please now you can see here 
um, that we've done it correctly and it's eight on either side and everything is good so we'll go ahead and hit prepare now I'm not gonna actually do this but what I like to do is I like to clone everything except layouts and everything except the groups so I'll choose no and no there and then I'll go ahead and hit clone and merge well even though I just did it um, so we can go ahead and check this now I'm just uh, instead of doing it in 3D, it'll be a little quicker for me to do it in a layout view. 201 through 208, please store. Yeah. Boom. There are our washes. So if we go back to Executor, we're going to bring that up. We see that things are blue in MA3D, and we see that things are blue here. Let's just take this a step further and take a quick look at our color picker. I'm going to try to bring this up. Well, that didn't work too well. Um, so let's go ahead and, and look at our color picker here. If we go to a red wash, we can see that our uh, auras are red. Let's check that one more time. If we go to a magenta wash, our uh, auras are magenta. So there you go. That would be the easiest way that I would recommend cloning into something like this. Um, I know this is kind of a brief overview, but I don't want this video to be too long. There's so much to talk about in, in punt pages and why you know you do things and, and how you lay it out. And it's all about muscle memory. But um, the best thing you can do is just start programming and get familiar with your punt page you know, muscle memory is everything, especially on the consoles. I know things are a little weird with the threes floating around right now. Um, but yeah, the best thing I can recommend is just getting out there and doing shows and seeing what works for you and seeing what doesn't work for you.